Welcome, my name is Josh Lewis and I'm with ESRI. I run our business partner team and we're here today to talk to you about MapIt, which is an exciting new product that we launched back in July at the Microsoft Worldwide Partner Conference. I'm joined today by Art Haddad, who's the lead developer and ran the product team that built MapIt, as well as Johan Herling, who is the business manager from our business analyst suite of products. We're going to spend the next few minutes talking about MapIt, where it's going, success we're having in the field, uh, etc. So, Art, let's start with, with, with MapIt as it is today. Sure. MapIt at 1.0 came out, as you know, in July when we launched it at the Worldwide Partner Conference. Since then, we've had a huge amount of success with, with a number of partners and users downloading the product and, and putting it to its paces. One, they tell us it's very simple to use, it's easy to build applications with, and it's very powerful in the form of integration with the Microsoft world. Since we've introduced the Silverlight and WPF API, we've had well over 7,000 downloads in less than three months' time. And that's developer downloads, and that's a huge number of downloads working with this product. And with the, the Microsoft Silverlight platform behind it, it's, it's got a huge following. Well, that, that, that's great. So, so you know, you and your team have been driving pretty hard to get this thing out the door, and we've got a release coming up in mid-November. Uh, when you think about 1.1, what, what are the function? What's the functionality, or or the changes that you brought to it that really you're most proud of as a team? And talk to me about that. Yeah. Well, well the entire team itself is, is very proud of first the whole product, uh, but more importantly, some of the innovations we've we've made as uh, in the form of simplicity. That's the that's the hardest thing you can get within a product. Trying to make it easy to use and simple to work with. One, we wanted to plug in into your ex existing environment. We didn't want to change the way you work. Instead, we wanted to work with you in, in that world. Um, for instance, if I want to work with uh, services, I don't want to have you work with a whole new security model. We just plug into your security model. If I want to work with a development environment, well, there's no reason to, to learn something that you don't already know. Let's leverage your existing skills, Silverlight WPF API. As a matter of fact, at 1.1, we made it even easier to work with um, the Microsoft stack, if you will, uh, by providing designer components. So you can just drag and drop, plug and play, and create an application in minutes as, as opposed to hours in the old way. Taking a step further, Office integration with SharePoint, SharePoint Server, and, and uh, our web parts for SharePoint. That has had uh, tremendous success. At 1.0, we had a simple map web part, which enabled you to add your SharePoint lists and SQL Server data, uh, as well as Excel data, onto a map. At 1.1, we've enhanced that and extended that and plugged uh, additional components into your workflow as well as provide um, interactivity between SharePoint lists as well as the map. Johan, is there any, any thoughts you have on, on, on MapIt and sort of what it's meaning to, to your products and, and on how you see things uh, potentially playing out? Sure, I, I think that there are two really exciting, uh, exciting parts about it. Uh, one of them is these sort of data enrichment things that we've already touched upon a little bit. Uh, really enabling uh, business intelligence users to get a full understanding. I like to think of it as sort of a 360 degree view of who their customers are uh, and augmenting it with uh, demographic data and uh, consumer expenditure data and so on to really understand how to best reach that market and, and of course satisfy their, their needs. Business intelligence vendors and business intelligence users are very used to, to asking what give me these numbers that are greater than some sum or all the numbers that fall between these two sums and so on. But when you bring geography into that equation, you can ask a whole different set of questions. You can ask uh, what's the closest competitor that I have? How, how far are they uh, away from my, from my stores? What, uh, what does the underlying demographic population look like around me? And what are the complementary stores around me? So it's a different set of questions that you can ask of the existing data that you already have, which I think is a, a, a real progress. 